Mm-hmm. Okay, Dick. Oh, very good. I think they can hear and, you and see you while I configure. Okay, very good. Be back shortly. All right, excellent. Hey, chat room. We have a big surprise. We actually have a chat room celebrity of the week today. No, we don't need the crickets. Send the crickets home. There's no pay for the crickets. Ooh. Oh, the foliage started. Magoo, where are you? I guess the foliage is starting. Uh, you're way north, right? Mm, crickets on vacation. They will be now. Just getting started. Oh, okay. Hey, Roberto. Point Magoo. I uh, know we're going to do the, uh, since the chat, since the uh, poll sort of takes up some time, I'm going to save that for next week. So we're going to talk to Jim who organized the poll, the two polls, and he's going to be chat room celebrity of the week. And I mean, I may ask him to do like one or two of the questions if he has them at hand. If not, we'll just do them next week. Uh, uh, um, let's see something here. Uh, uh, here it is. Okay. No, lanternflies are not the same as fireflies. Lanternflies, did you notice they're starting to die? Yeah, but all their eggs are all over the trees. Yeah. Lanternflies are a big, uh, I have a few in the backyard. Evidently, Myra has a ton up where she lives. Um, They destroy crops, so... People like wineries and stuff that have to be ca- very careful of them. And uh, I just noticed they're, they're very hard to kill <laughs> because they, they leap. If you spray them with something, they leap off the tree and they go 10 to 12 feet. And they're very annoying because uh, Dennis... I said, oh, my God, Dennis, you have one on your neck. And then the following week, I had one on my neck. Uh, they don't sting. They don't bite. I, I checked on online. Um, but they start dying in October. And I noticed that when they come down the tree low enough for me to spray them with uh, I have some kind of <clears throat> bug killer thing, they used to just leap into the air. And you had to try to see where they landed because they took three shots before uh, they would slow down enough you could step on them. But <clears throat> the one yesterday and the one today, you just spray them with the stuff and they just fall off and die. They, it's like they've given up. It's like, it's October, we're supposed to die. I'll just die ahead of time. I'll die now. But as Myra said, they are laying eggs like crazy. Crazy. All right. Dick. Oh, you've only okay. <clears throat> and, and you have the uh, info for chat room celebrity of the week. I have set up a Zoom meeting for him. Yes. Perfect. I, in, a, in a moment, I will start that Zoom meeting. All right. Perfect. So I think, I think I've got it all together. I think we're on the stream. I see both of my recordings are running, and uh, I'm talking into the microphone, so I think I can hear myself. That means other people can hear me too. I hear you. I see you. If I do this, I see me, and I go back. All right. Everything appears. All you need is the date, October 8th. Is it October 8th, and it's a Saturday? Yes. Yes. All right. For Gizfiz episode 496, recorded on Saturday, October 8th, 2022, we'll begin this show in three, two, Ladies and gentlemen, 
It's time for... It's the Giz Fizz with the Giz Whiz. It's kind of like Cheese Whiz. It's the Giz Fizz. And now your host, Matt Mattis Ryder and the Giz Whiz, Dick DiBartolo. Welcome to regular old-fashioned Giz Fizz. The Hop Ladies are on vacation. Oh, my word. Okay, so it's Giz Fizz with a chat room celebrity of the week. <laughs> and then we're going to have photos from George Davis that you caption. We're going to have you provide snappy answers to a stupid question. We're going to have fun facts also from George Davis. And play match game. And I guess we're going to jump right in with... Oh, I usually have a sound effect. Wait a minute. Let us meet our chat room celebrity of the week. Oh, <laughs> it's been so long since we had a chat room uh, celebrity of the week. Well, we're starting with that? Oh, didn't you say that he was ready? Uh I said I had a Zoom meeting set up for him. I told him to come. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, okay. Oh, no, we'll do he's fun. Ready. He's ready. He's here. Okay. Okay. Um, I have no sound effects, but ladies and gentlemen, let us meet our chat room celebrity of the week. Hello. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hi. Jim, how are you doing? So I'm doing wonderful, Dick. How are you today? Oh, yeah, I got. Of, I, go I am ahead. so no, nerdy. Ahead. I have all kinds of stuff. So you want me to tell you real quick? Here, I'll go. Yeah. This way. So one of my computer desks, some of my collection of microphones. This is a oh. old sign that I found in a, um, like a, a flea market. That used to be at a airline gate, like Piedmont Air. I took it and refurbished it, and I made it a SpaceX Crew Dragon departure sign. Oh and uh, it, it has a little slide out. I can go in and change the LEDs whenever I want. Oh, so that's, that's a fun amazing. little project. Yeah. Uh, clock up there. The, the schematic is. Yeah, a, that's like a railroad clock, right? Yes. From yep, a railroad absolutely. station? Yeah. It's, it's a regulator clock. Uh, the schematic is a variable capacitance oscillator that was used on a 80s era satellite. Found that at wow. a, a state sale. A uh, couple, of, couple of digital clocks behind me. And then a couple of my ham radio awards on this side. So lots and what of nerdy are you stuff. the awards for? Uh, the top one is talk to people, uh, confirm contacts in 100 plus countries. And the second one wow. is confirm contacts in every state. Wow. Also, that uh, that mic, that's an old RCA radio mic, isn't it, behind you? It's a Heil oh, sound reproduction of, of those mics. All three of those are oh, Heil oh, sound reproductions. Oh, okay. Okay. It I do great. have some it'll... other mics like that i got a little mic collection so there's one oh my it's just not that's a sure mic visible um that, let's see i think it is yes it's a sure model 51 yeah wow and you're talking on a high 504 what is it 405 pr i have the same mic here yeah pr yeah that's it i know i was um, jealous i had to get one well, J Jim has organized the uh, polls that we, we did one last week. We're going to do one next week. So what is your occupation outside of providing polls for people who beg? I retired a couple of years ago from uh, the corporate wonderland that is uh, cable broadband. And I was uh, in marketing there. So I like to say I was the guy who figured out uh, how fast your speed should be. 
And then, uh, so right now in retirement, I'm focused mostly on ham radio things. And there's two things in particular. Uh, I work for a company that produces uh, ham radio training videos. So if you want to learn what you need to get your license, uh, you'll go on and take a class and see me as the instructor. So it's all videotaped courses. Oh, wow. And then well, uh, I also... much like you've retired. That, uh, you know, this is only uh, 10 hours a week or so, so it doesn't oh, keep okay. me too busy. Okay. Yep. okay. And then the, the other thing I do, and I just started this, is I am on the social media team for a group called Amateur Radio on the International Space Station. We set up communications via ham radio between astronauts and students like elementary school, grade school students to talk to astronauts, learn about science, ask astronaut questions, those kind of things. Wow. Now, not astronauts who are in space, but yes. astronauts that are in their homes. No, astronauts, no, astronauts in, space? in space on the space station. They get to talk to somebody 250 miles up. Wow. Uh, that's, that's great. So yeah. Have a lot about, of fun. Uh, yeah. So we always ask the normal questions. You have any pets? I have four cats. Don't be surprised if one shows up back here at some point, although they just ate, so they might not. Oh, okay. Okay. And you live in a house. It looks like you have trees. I live in, you. I live in a house. I'm in uh, just outside of Atlanta and uh, it's a lovely place to be. So I'm very, very happy with my house in Georgia. In Georgia. Okay. Excellent. Yep. And where did you find out about Twit and or Leo? Well, I've been watching Leo since back in the tech TV days. I found Twit four or five years ago, and then I found Twit Live about two years ago. And it was really cool to discover, wait, if I stick around after Saturday's Twit, I get to hang out with Dick D. Bartolo. And to me, that's <laughs> just, that's awesome. I always said to myself, Jim, one of your goals is to be on episode 496 of a podcast. So check that box off. Wow. Well, what a coincidence that this is 496. Isn't it amazing? This is third, right. <laughs> and then the uh, other question we always ask your favorite gadget of all time. So it could be old, new, something you're using this minute. I didn't think of an answer to this. I'm going to say clocks. I love clocks of all kinds. In addition to the one behind me, uh, I have repaired a few clocks. I have digital clocks that are connected to the GPS satellite system for super um, for super accurate time. And I'm going on a trip next week, which will include a visit to the Royal Greenwich Observatory, which is where super standardized time kind of get it start. Yeah. Okay. So, so clocks you're not, is my you're not, answer. Okay. No, that that's it. that's perfect. Now you're not going to be here next Saturday. Is that what you're saying? I will not be here next Saturday. I'll be back in two weeks. Next Saturday. Uh, okay. I th I think, would you want, like us to hold the poll so you can be around for it? No, please, please go ahead if you want. And okay. uh, I can okay. always catch up thanks to Beatmaster's uh, video. He's amazing with that. He's just amazing yeah, keeping. And, and we should just plug that, that go to uh, YouTube and uh, search for Giz Fizz. And Beatmaster has, I believe, hundreds of them up there. Um, okay, you hey, want to take a couple of questions from the chat room? Absolutely. Uh, okay, you can see the chat room, right? You must have yep, 19 I can see monitors the chat. I'm there. Look at, okay, looking at chat it. room, I, one or two questions. Two big ones. For Jim, go, go, go. Um, graveyard tuba, yes, Jewish people can use ham radio. It's kosher. <laughs> That's very uh yes i am uh, uh bill in michigan yes i am a mets fan i am uh, a little disappointed in the last eight days but i'm hoping for a big two game comeback in the next two days uh let's see um what's my handle in chat my handle in chat is n4 bfr which is my call sign that is what every ham radio gets like Every ham radio operator gets a unique call sign, and that one's mine. 
Um, uh, that one is a custom one. Uh, so usually they're consecutively issued and the, I got a consecutively issued one that was KJ four F I K, but I didn't like that. And I wanted to do something to honor my dad. So mine is N four BFR, which is BFR is my dad's initials. So that was, um, that was cool. Uh, do I like boiled peanuts? No, I haven't really. Uh, my wife loves them. I'm not a big uh, fan of those. Um, let's see. Saw a couple of ham radio questions. I do do FT8, but not too often. Uh, my favorite Star Trek is... Um, I'm going to go with the original series. And um, I am an I am an amateur extra operator, which is the highest level of ham radio license. There are three technician general and extra. I'm ham radio extra, and I've been licensed since 2008. Wow. I think I, I know how to turn on a radio. Okay. Hey, anytime and, you yeah, want that training. Was before you told I'll, the radio to turn itself on, I, I knew how to use the two knobs on the front of it. I have to uh, push right, several question. buttons here. It's very complicated. <laughs> oh, okay. Not so me. All right. One more question for Jim, and then we'll go on to our photos. Huh? Huh? Um, let's see. Uh, somebody asked, uh, Coke or Pepsi. I am a uh, Coke or pop. I am a, uh, diet Coke guy. Um, but I'll just uh, brag on one of my best friends, uh, who's also a ham radio operator used to work in the labs for Coca-Cola. So he would actually be the quality control guy when somebody said, Hey, we just did up a batch of Coke and it doesn't taste right. He had the magic taste buds that would say officially yes this is right or no this is wrong so i have really interesting friends because of ham radio wow and then if he said no this is wrong would they throw out the batch dump it down the drain throw out the dump it down the drain okay. wow yep amazing well jim i have to thank you on behalf of the chat room for organizing the chat the uh, poll we had last week which was great and for the one that we're going to do next week, which my pleasure, uh, I've seen. Can, yeah, yeah. Can and I give you the a teaser? How about I give a teaser? Yeah. Oh, do do a teaser. Go ahead. Okay. So one of the questions that we asked was which twit should have a reality show, and the top four vote getters were. Um, I'll put them uh, in alphabetical order. Dick D. Bartolo, Steve Gibson from Security Now, John Salina, and Paul Thorat. Okay, so and those the question are the top was, four. Oh, which one of those four should have their own reality show? Yes. Okay. Are uh, we going to play for that now? We can play for that now. Chat room. Okay. Who came out on top? Okay. Me, Jamma B, Paul Therott, and Steve Gibson. Who, which one of them would have their own? And and while J the chat room is thinking about that, I'll throw in a little piece of trivia. Okay. When I looked at the results of the poll last Friday, a week ago, um. Our friend from uh, This Week in Google, Jeff Jarvis, was in clear second place. And three people came up and bypassed him in the last uh, in the last week uh, through their vote. So uh, interesting that uh, Jeff Jarvis fell from grace a little bit. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. I got one vote. Jamma B has three votes. Paul has one. I'm just looking up here really quick. Uh, Paul has another vote. Um, all right. It looks like I think Paul will win. This is just looking at what I, yeah. And there's another Paul. Um, okay. Paul, the answer, the chat room, <laughs> as non-scientific as you can get, it looks like I saw more Paul answers than any of the other three. And the uh, the okay. poll answer was in a tie. I, did I hear 
jammer don't, don't being we, in the background. Isn't this part of next week's uh, results? We're just doing one of them. Okay. 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 So in a tie for fourth place with 8.8% of the vote, Paul Therat and Jammer B. <laughs> okay. In second place, our security now friend, Steve Gibson, which means Dickie D is the man that Giz Fizzers most want to have a <laughs> reality show. Now, I'm going to guess there's a little survey bias here, but... Congratulations, Dickie yeah. D. I think it's pretty cool. Thank you. Well, this is I would watch the Dickie D show. Well, actually, this is a reality show right here every week. We do at least an hour um of stuff. Unrehearsed um, at, live. Absolutely. Unre unrehearsed. Yes, this unrehearsed. Is that gets. is correct. That <laughs> that's correct. So uh, next time we do a survey, somebody said why did in the chat room, why didn't I put Charlie in? So maybe you know, Charlie should have an option next time in a vote. Oh, well, we, uh, if we just make the survey, your favorite dog on a twit episode, I think we can swing it. He's bound <laughs> to win. He, oh, there I was a, oh, I don't Burke know. had a cute little Lily, dog on Lily's this week been, in Google oh, yesterday. A lot of the other day. Oh, 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 okay. It's a Lily. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. It seems like there is competition that I don't know about. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Reed, thank you so much. I have no sound effects. The battery's dead since nobody. Oh, do you have one? Do one. Ladies and gentlemen, there Perfect. we go. I thank you for being thank you, Dickie D. Celebrity of the week. Uh, that was that was great. Okay, so now we'll go into photos you captioned from George Davis. And here's photo one. Uh, okay, it is a highway sign with just two arrows. One points right, one points left, and there is no copy on the sign. Okay, so you make a, ca a caption for that. Highway sign, arrow, one in each direction, right and left, with no copy. Push me, pull me. Go that way, follow the yellow brick road. Um, house in the middle. Oh, house in the middle. Well, we would uh, show 100. You come to a fork in the road, take it. Excuse me. Uh, go both this way to crazy town, two roads to nowhere. My brain at 4 p.m. weekdays, choose your own path, choose your own adventure. He went that way, go where you want to go. So dead end. Quick, choose one. It means, uh, Whoop, they're going so fast. Two-way street. Can't go wrong either way. North, south. Pick your own path, grasshopper. This end up. All straight or reverse. Uh, made for the spray can crowd. Choose your own destination. We don't care. One way or the other. And another. Go whichever way you want. We don't care. And we'll end with the two towns. That shall not be mentioned. And I think that was Caesar. They're going by so fast. Two towns that will not be mentioned. George said, for this caption, the sign with two arrows pointing in both directions. My caption is, this sign is no good to me. I don't know where I'm at. And for sure, I don't know where I'll end up. Uh, okay, photo two. Oh, God, what a beautiful train station. Uh, it is Berlin, my gift of train stations and the fact that there's a sign. Uh, the, a Berlin train station, all glass, beautiful train station. Okay, we need a caption for that. Modern train station in Germany. Jungle Jim for trains. Darius Lee ran out of stick on letters. Um, oh, if, if Jim is around, he should play match game. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Jungle Jim for trains. What happens when prices go up? 
they just called off Oktoberfest. In Germany, trains are so clean, they're invisible. That's funny. Not enough glass. How LAX train station will never look inside a fish's eye. Doesn't, uh, doesn't the steam break the glass? Aren't we all jelly donuts, really? Hall of glass? Where are all the people? Definitely not the Columbus Circle Station. Uh, where's all the trash? Fallout shelter? People in glass train stations shouldn't throw stones. Arriving soon, train to hell. And we'll end up with Gizwiz Fantasy. Uh, okay, George said... Inside the Berlin train station, my caption is, it's 3 p.m., and I can't believe there is no one around here at this time. Where did they all go? Well, you got some matches. A lot of people said, where are the people? Um, uh, okay. Photo three is, oh, Stonehenge. A uh, Photo three is a photo of Stonehenge for you to make up a caption for Hedgehog Stones, an ancient calendar, old school Legos. On this episode of Domino Masters, Stoned Again, great place to hide Easter eggs. I'm firing my architect. A rolling rock gathers no moss, but these do. Flintstones condo, unfinished city of bedrock. Unhinge the hinge, hinge. Look, Lego's newest kit. Apple's new retro design is getting out of hand. Before the big fire, the museum staff hates setting the stones up ahead for daylight savings time. That's very funny. Uh, got any toilet paper? Another train station from the Neolithic era. I hope these stones don't roll. Wait, you're saying the stone has to be moved four inches to the right? Uh, anybody got a spare virgin for the sacrifice? Crappy hotel doesn't even have a roof. And we'll end with 286. If you push over the correct one, they'll all fall in a perfect circle. Uh, okay, and George said, at Stonehenge, my caption is, I thought I was going to be able to tell what time it is just by looking at it. I was wrong. Uh, okay, photo four. Oh, my gosh. Fried chicken, what can I say? Pieces of fried chicken. Looks like a... Um, some drumsticks and maybe a wing, whatever it is. I wish they were here in person. Um, crispy fried cat. Ugh. Rocky Mountain oysters. Oh, no. Pass me a thigh. That's better. Lunch. Rat nuggets. Ugh. I just ate that. Poltergeist. Chicken nuggies will be my downfall. Or Orangina or Spacey. The bird responsible for the most death is the fried chicken. Myra Joyce's snack. Plant-based chicken ain't. Fried vittles. McDonald's McNuggets zoomed in. Uh, Myra's snack today. KFC Extra Crispy. So no one is a frog. Too much cholesterol. The end for the pizza rat. Heart attack special. Not McDonald's. I don't see the boot. Uh, just need some tots. Fossil crab. Kentucky fried mice. Oh, my God. Tennessee ain't got nothing on us. Uh, Tennessee hasn't got anything on us, says Kentucky. Sure, it might be chicken. Deep fried tofu. Chicken for dick. Alas, poor yo cluck. I knew you well. And we'll end with Ranger Rick. Chicken needs the rest of the order. Uh, okay. Four. George said, for the four pieces of delicious looking crispy chicken, 
My caption is, my mouth automatically fills up with juices just before I'm about to devour these pieces of chicken. I can't wait. I bet it tastes uh, okay. like chicken. <laughs> yeah, it probably does. Uh, photo five. Oh, cute little doggy laying on his side, looking far away. Little doggy laying on his side, looking far away. Is that the can opener? I didn't mean to eat that chicken. Charlie would swipe right in doggy tinder. I followed both arrows that didn't get any chicken. Dreaming of that bone that got away. I fall into the gizwiz and I can't get up. It was a great treat I just ate. Can you turn the lights out? The eyes have it. Someone is eating a snack nearby. Life is rough. My food bowl is way over there, just out of frame. I give up. Doggy dream state. Charlie's classmate. Dog at the airport with sad eyes. Don't leave me. What's the dog got to do to get a strap around here? Shh, I'm trying to sleep here. I wonder when my master will come home. That looks about right. Sounds about right. Cute dog yearning for those chicken nuggets. Charlie ghosted me. Forlorn good boy. And we'll end with allergy. I'm getting philosophical. Is there really a dog? Wow. Uh, okay. George said, for a cute dog lying down, waiting for his afternoon walk, my caption is, Kirk, my owner, is just coming in from work. He's going to take me for a long walk through the neighborhood. Yippee! Okay, and six of six, photo six, is a flight of brick stairs. Okay. Uh, we're outdoors, and it's a flight of stone stairs with brick banisters on one side and a brick wall on the other. Uh, Mayan Stairmaster. Oh, that's funny. Dr. Mom, walk this way. Stairway to Stonehenge, stairway to heaven, up these stairs for the virgin sacrifice, stairway to Disneyland, stairway to the top, stairway to heaven. Stonehenge 2.0 got it right this time. The stairs to Stonehenge are paved with disaster. Uh, your reward for climbing to the top, you are the sacrifice. Another stairway to heaven, ancient exercise. Stairway to grandma's house. Where's the elevator? Who's ever in charge of the weeds? Didn't do a good job. Secret stairway behind Stonehenge. Yep, it's one of my favorite. Oh, no, not for this. Stairway to heaven. Who are you staring at? Staring. Watch that step. <laughs> and we'll end with Chumley. Not H I P A A compliant. These steps need to be removed. That's about right. Um, okay. For photo six, which is uh, 20 steps climb to reach the top, my caption is, when I come to a new set of steps like these, I try to imagine what I'll see when I get to the top. And most times, I'm quite happy. Okay, but George continues with the second part of his feature, Fun Facts. Oh, Dennis, I hope Dennis is watching. It's all about Peeps. You know, Peeps, the, uh, he called, uh, George says the Easter candy. Dennis eats them year round. Um, in 1953, when Peeps were first created, it took this many hours to make one from start to finish. All right. In 1953, when Peeps were first created, it took this many hours to make one from start to finish. How many hours? 
Well, you got to, I don't know. If you're doing the first one, I'm going to say seven hours. Ranger Rick is in with eight. Wow. Three, three hours, five. Woody, two, eight hours. Stewie said it two days because they had to blow it up with a tire pump. Chumley says, shaping a peep by hand sounds a bit tough. Yeah, I think so. Nine months to make a peep. Wow. What's your guess, Myra? How many hours to make the first peep? Six. Six hours. Okay. Jamma B? One hour. One hour. Okay. I think I said, did I say eight hours? Okay. Or seven hours. I forgot what I said. Well, the amount of time it took to make the first peep was 27 hours when peeps were first created it took 27 hours a lot of it was cooling time so they were able to wrap them properly <laughs> oh. holy peep holy peep oh my goodness this could bring the, bring the end of people eating peeps, depending on the answer. True or false? There is a small amount of wax in every peep. Yeah, Jim says, this is a peep show. Chicken head, true. True. Dr. Mom, wow. And no one cares. <laughs> Eric Duckman said it's eatable wax. You got to wax your peep. True, and that's not all. True, it makes them shiny. Bees wax. True for waxy goodness. Oh my God, wax on the original maker's ears. Paraffin. If it's candle wax, true. If it's earwax, false. It's an addicting wax. Um, God. You know, I'm going to say true. Jamma B? Yeah, I'll say true too. It's a tiny bit of wax. They say a little bit. Yeah, because they're so sturdy. Myra? True. We're all in, we're all in at this end for true. Um, the answer is, oh, someone had this exact thing. It's true, and the wax is used in each, each eye to make them shiny. I saw wax in the eyes go by once or twice. Wow, very good. George, these are great questions. Oh, okay. How many peeps are produced each day in the United States? How many peeps are produced each day? Oh, way too many. Three million. A billion. Oh, Grace says two, but they're really huge. Seven million. How many peeps? Boy. Well, the thing is, I think George is right. People think of them, I think, as an Easter thing because I think the original were Easter bunnies. Um, I'm going to say they make two million a day. Myra? Wow. A hundred million. A hundred million. Oh. Gamma V? Uh, Five thousand. Five thousand. That's low. A okay. day. Are you a day. How many peeps are produced each day in the United States? Over two and a half million. Ah! <laughs> uh, 
Oh, Jamma B will know this. <laughs> there were enough peeps, uh, peeps produced in a year to go from the earth to the moon. How many times? I didn't know there peeps could fly. Oh, uh, yeah. When peeps can fly, yeah. Enough peeps produced in the U.S. to go from the earth to the moon. To and from the earth to the moon, how many times? Oh, oh, wow. Dwindle says once they'll burn up on re-entry. Wow, Raven. I have no idea what peeps were till this minute. Wow. Seven times. <laughs> um Oh, in the United States, uh, five times. Myra? 30. 30 times. Jamma B? 10 times. 10 times. Uh, there are enough peeps produced each year to go to and from the moon. Oh, two and a half times. Um, well, oh, this is very interesting. For how I'm gonna put my finger over the answer. For how many years has Peeps been the number one non chocolate Easter candy? For how many years has Peeps been the number one non chocolate? Easter candy. Man, I'll take Wait. some jelly beans over a peep anytime. Yeah, but but jelly beans are year round, and this is saying uh, Easter candy. Uh, you know, I, I thought I thought peeps couldn't be around for more than forty <laughs> years. I'm going forty years. Excellent, chicken head. Excellent. What's your answer, Jeremy B? I don't know. Chickenhead says I could I should give peeps a chance. <laughs> That's very funny. Um forty years, Myra? Sixty seven years. Fifty seven no, years? Sixty seven. Sixty seven years. Wow. Jamma B? Uh, forty two years. Forty two years, okay. I don't think of it as being too old. How many years has Peeps been the number one non-chocolate Easter candy? Almost 70 years. Mm. Yeah, I was wrong. Thank you, everyone, for another great week. I'll see you next time. Stay healthy. That's important. Bye, George. George, these are great. They are so much fun. Uh, um, so, Dick, okay. I have a photo yes. I want to show. Okay, good. Um, and I have some things to say about this show, this photo. I hope to not take the rest of the show up explaining about this photo. But you know how Google Photos will not just look in your photo library, but will grab anything you have on your computer and upload it to the Google Photos? This is such a photo. And this photo is a screenshot of the IRC that I took on my computer on July 20th, 2008. 18? 2008. No, did, before, I, okay. before I met, before I had come up and visited Leo, before I started working here at Twit. And okay. this was a bit of chat, and I figured out it's around the time, I'm presuming it because of the content of the chat and looking up the date, when Google, no, I'm sorry, Amazon introduced AWS, Amazon Cloud Services. And I thought I was very clever. I made a series of comments, and I thought they were very clever. And looking back on it now, it's obvious it's an obvious pair, set of comments, and not very clever at all. But I thought this was so important that I, I, I did a screen grab and I and I check marked, you know, put little carrots in. So hey, look, this is where I this is the thing I wrote, and this is the thing I wrote, and the thing. So you see these red carrots? You can see the joke that I was making, and it goes like this. I says, Jammer B has looked. At clouds from both sides now. 
And then Jammer B goes, it's Cloud's illusions, I recall. You know, and then Jammer B says, I really don't know Clouds at all. Ha, ha, ha. Jammer B is so very clever. He even <laughs> thought he was so clever, he even marked his comments and made a screenshot. And, ooh, Del Poco. He said, lol. Oh, I got a lol. I must have been very lonely and desperate at that time that I actually made a screenshot <laughs> and oh my copied all of this. Goodness. And what year is this again? This is July 20th, 2008. And I do want to point out that Mike B was with us then, as he is today. Yes. So this is all about saying, hi, Mike B. I saw you back then. Oh, my I word. I see you now. <laughs> Yay, Mike B. And Dale Paco is there. Dale Paco's the one who laughed at my joke. And I saw wow. this East Coast girl, Bronwyn. Wow. I remember Bronwyn. Holy cow. I, I I recognize some of those other names, but Mike B, he's prominent, and he's prominent today. Wow. Thank you, Mike B, for your long service to the Twit IRC. <laughs> that was great. That and was it's great. It's just so weird that um, Google, I found this like in Google Photos. It's not something I'd ever saved or anything, but... Hey, does Google Photos do just do that automatically? Yeah, it's not. It doesn't just look at your photos library. Any photo you have on your computer, it's going to put up in Google Photos. Maybe it's oh, an okay. option. But maybe you must have an old a computer, a though, right? But, huh? You must have a really old computer, right? Oh, I have. I have. Uh, I have a 1984 original Macintosh from March of 1984 that has the original signatures of the developers in, embossed on the inside of the cover. Um, and in uh, January of 2024, I will bring it back to Twit and we will boot it up for its 40th birthday. Wow! Wow! Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so I do that's have an amazing. old computer. And last time I checked, yeah. it ran. I haven't run it. In Excellent. Four, I haven't run it in five years or so, but I hope when I put it back together and hook it back up, it'll run again. Perfect. No, that was great. Uh, okay, ten ten. We're going to do. Okay, oh, can, can uh, you have Jim be a participant in match game when we do it? We can. He can. We will. Okay. He is. Okay. He is okay. standing Perfect. by. Okay, very good. Okay, well, there's a couple of... Oh, okay, very good. Fact of crap. Former IRS Commissioner Joseph Noonan was busted in 1952 when he failed to pay tax on an $1,800 bet that he won. Fact or crap. Former IRS Commissioner... Joseph Noonan was busted in 1952 and he failed to pay tax on an $1,800 win on a bet. Wow. Everybody thinks. Tell <laughs> me, says, well, I hope so. Wow. I didn't think the IRS was that. <laughs> if it's on the internet, it must be true. Myra? Fact. Fact. Jamma B? I'll say fact. Uh, well, surprise, everybody. It's a fact. It's a fact. <laughs> Edgar Rice Burroughs based his Tarzan books on folklore he heard while exploring the Congo. Fact or crap? Edgar Rice Burroughs based the Tarzan books on folklore he heard while exploring the Congo. Uh, crap, crap. Oh, interesting. We sort of down them. <laughs> Raven said, Cheetah told them. Seems like a fact, Okaru. Ranger Rick is a fact. Then a lot of crap. Martron fact. Purely guessing crap, Chumley. 
Uh, let me see. Edgar Rice Burroughs, Bass Toys, and on the folklore. No, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, sitting in his chair, and he goes, Oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I say, Crap. Myra? Crap. Uh, Jamma B? Fact. Fact. Okay. Uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, based a thousand books on folklore he heard while exploring the Congo, is crap. Okay. On Heroes, I don't even know what that is. There's a TV show. Oh, Sailor's main superpower is the ability to understand tax forms and maximize deductions. Seems reasonable. Does it, make any, oh, it just seems reasonable? Okay. On Hero Silo's main superpower is the ability to understand tax forms and maximize deductions. She's probably the one that's a she or he. It was probably the one that took got the uh, IRS commissioner to pay up. Fact or crap? Crap, crap. Again. It's leaning toward crap. Myra said it's so ridiculous it might be a fact. Boy, it's down the middle. Jamma B, fact or crap? I never saw the show. I have no idea, so I'm not going to answer. Oh, wow. Um, I never saw the show. I mean, it just seems too well, you're stupid. You're going to answer anyway. I'm going to say crap. Um, on Heroes, Silo's main superpower, the ability to understand tax forms and maximize deductions, is crap. Uh, okay. Let me see. We have 20 minutes left. Um, okay. We'll do a. Oh, did you have that YouTube thing that Leah started I do. the show? Uh, you know, it's just 90 seconds if anybody hasn't seen it yet. Uh, this is my appearance on The Tonight Show. That's the kind of song you'll be humming and whistling as you walk out of the theater. Not now, not until the show's over there. <laughs> Good song, isn't it? Great song. Yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, a little bit later on, we're going to have a, a demonstration of driver fitness. Uh, but right now, and this seems to be safety night here on The Tonight Show, but right now we'd like to present for a very short message a man from the National Safety Council who wants to talk about safety in the home, office, uh, in your car, and so forth. It's a very brief message, but a vital public service. So here is Mr. Richard DiBartolo. Mr. DiBartolo. Are you all right? Uh, what did he say as he was walking out? Read the book. It's on safety. Read the book. On <laughs> anyway, it did get a huge uh, response. Okay. We're just going to use the back cover of Al Jaffe's book. Uh, the premise of the book is someone asks you a stupid question and you come back with a snappy answer. Uh, so... Here's the picture, okay? Guy's actually been beaten up and robbed. And the passerby is saying, do you need help? Okay, do you need help? And your snappy or snotty answer is... Oh, uh, no, I could not... Re <laughs> I would not repeat that today. Um, do you need help? Yeah, which way to the Hilton? No, I need a phone charger. No, I'm trying my wedding gown. No more on practicing a Houdini trick. No, I was successfully robbed. No, it's just getting a drink. No, I'm doing a great job of being a victim. No, uh, I was like, no, I need a drink. 
No, just practicing for the real thing. That's very good. No, I tied myself up here to get attention. Yeah. Wow. So f I, uh, no, I can get to, through this on my own. I did a few minutes ago. Yes. Isn't it obvious? If you're asking me that question, it is obvious which of us needs help. No, I need a doctor. No, stick them up. This is a robbery. No, I tied myself down for the hurricane. No, fire hydrant inspection day. Yes, call the cops. The last guy that asked me that did this to me. Yes, which way did that hammer go? No, I need ammo. I'm studying Houdini. No, but it's the worst Halloween costume ever. No, this happens to me every day. No, I'm getting ready for Black Friday sale. And we'll end with, no, I, I'm tied down to keep from floating away. All right, this is back cover. So Jaffe did not have any answers to it. Um, all right, then. All right, let's, oh, I'll call Dennis. Oh, you want to see if Alex is available? Uh, huh? Alex is not answering. He's not answering? Yeah. Oh, you know, I think he said he was going to be away for uh, several Saturdays. Uh, uh, um. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. I hear Dennis coming down the steps now. Oh, wow. Poor Peter was so. Tried to hock his blank. Wow. Uh, I, I got something here. You need a pen? Poor Peter was so poor, he tried to hock his blank. All right. I, uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, I got some matches. Okay. Um, okay. We'll start with Jim. Poor Peter was so poor, he tried to hock his blank. Jim said... His pants. He tried to hock his pants. Good answer. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure you got any matches. Uh, Jamma B. Poor Peter was so poor, he tried to hock his... dog's dish. Uh, okay. I know I got at least one match. He tried to hock his wife. And Myra said, oh my God, he tried to hock his lungs. Oh, hock his lungs up? Yeah, you know, when you have like a really bad cough. Oh, oh, okay. So you're hocking your lungs up. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh dum, dum, dum. All right. Looking in the microscope, the scientist said, not only are these germs multiplying, they're also blanking. Looking into a microscope, where's Dennis? Looking into the microscope, the scientist said, not only are these germs multiplying, they're also blanking. Um, okay. All right, Jamma B, we're going to start with you. Scientists looking into the microscope said not only are these germs multiplying, they're also blanking. Solving multivariable <laughs> differential equations. <laughs> Got to be the number one answer. Uh, Myra, you said, oh, okay. Uh, looking into the microscope, not only are the germs multiplying, they're also smoking. Oh, you got some ends. You got some matches. Uh, Jamma B, you, oh, you gave yours. Uh, let's go to Jim. Not only are these germs multiplying, they're also dancing. 
Not so fast, Jamma B. Dancing. Adding, dancing, adding, adding, dancing. Oh no, I thought I thought more people would say adding, but I said dancing. Oh, uh, Dennis, what would your answer? In this situation, you're not allowed to have two answers. Come on. No, I, I can. I. Okay, you, I are, am the, you are allowed to have two answers. The rest of us can only have one. Yes, that is correct. As the writer of this question, <laughs> I can have as many answers as, as I want. Fair. Uh, let's hear what Dennis says. Matches anybody in chat. Uh, looking into the microscope, the scientist said, not only are these germs multiplying, they're also blanking. Singing. Singing. Oh. <laughs> uh, Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I am both. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, um. Oh, Dumb Donna was so dumb. On a date uh, when dumb. he heard he was go uh, uh, going out. Microphone on. No, your microphone he is on. He was so on. dumb he forgot to turn his microphone on. Oh, I see. Okay. Dumb Donna was so dumb. When he went on a date to meet a nice chick, he brought along blank. Dumb Donald was so dumb when he heard he was going on a date to meet a nice chick, he brought along blank. Uh, oh, oh, wow, okay, okay. Caught in the vagues. A, ro <laughs> a rotisserie oven. Bird seed. Dating for dummies. 57 sauce. A peeps dish. All right, Dennis, we're going to start with you. Dumb Door was so dumb when, uh, Dumb Donald was so dumb when he heard he was gonna, going on a date. <laughs> Uh, to meet a nice chick he brought along. Oh, <laughs> chicken feed. A lot of matches. Dickie D, chicken feed. Myra Joyce. Oh, my Myra got a match. Brought along peeps. Uh, Jamma B. Dumb Donald brought along. He's going to meet a nice chick. Egg salad. Okay. I know. He's a terrible answer. Uh, and, and Jim, chicken feed. All right. All right. That's good. Um, oh, okay. When dumb Dora heard her boyfriend was in the cooler. How cool she was he? <laughs> no. Dumb Dora heard her boyfriend was in the cooler. When she went to visit him, she brought along blank oh this is good this is gonna be good. dumb door heard her boyfriend was in the cooler when she went to visit him she brought along blank oh these are good a parker a sweater ice cube tray a wool hat a six pack <laughs> Refrigerator repairman, six pack of beer, a winter coat, sterno. <clears throat> these are <clears throat> these are very good answers. Earmuffs, whipped jello and whipped cream. Um. Okay, we'll start with Jim. When Dumb Dora heard her boyfriend was in the cooler, she brought along blank. Extra ice. Extra ice. Okay. Jamma B. Boyfriend in the cooler. She brought along beer. Uh, okay, Myra. She, oh, there you go. She brought along a winter jacket. Dennis, you said. Uh, very humdrum. Very humdrum. Brought along a scarf. I don't, all right, we'll give you a match. And a coat matches. Matches. <laughs> I don't have to write anything. I can just. Um,
I don't even understand this question, but I wrote it. But let's play and see if anybody, anybody possibly has an answer on it. The scientist said, yes, there is life on Mars, but only on blank. Oh, I have an answer. An answer just came to me. The scientist said, yes, there is life on Mars, but only on blank. I do have an answer. Will anybody match it? <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, wow. I got a match right off the bat. The scientist said, yes, there's life on Mars, but only on blank. <laughs> only on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Only every Thursday. Only on the dark side. Um, Chumley says, ah, I see a match too. Um, okay. The scientist said there is life on Mars, but only on blank. Let's go with Jamma B, our resident scientist. Only on <laughs> the creamy nugget. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I, don't know how to spell I said nugget. Oh, okay. Uh, there is life on Mars, but only on. I know I got to match at least one. Only on weekends. Uh, Myra. Oh, but this is funny. There's life on Mars only on New Year's Eve. That's a very funny answer. Dennis, there's life on Mars only on a Mars bar. That's where the creamy nougat is. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you met Sam and B. Okay. And Jim, there's life on Mars, but only on Saturdays. Okay. That's a match. Saturday is part of the weekend. Oh, we're going to do one more, and then we will meet. At them. Oh, okay. Dumb Dora was Charlie right after this question. Dumb Dora was so dumb. Charlie, I bet right she after wasn't this very question. Smart. <laughs> when the astrologer said, What sign were you born under? Dumb Dora said, Blank. Dumb Dora was so dumb. When the astrologer said, what sign were you born under? Dumb Doris said, blank. I'm not sure I'm going to get a match. <clears throat> Let me look up. Uh, I'm with stupid, emergency, exit, not an exit, dead end. No. It's all over the place. Uh, okay, let's start with Jim. Dumb Dora was so dumb when the astrologist said, what sign were you born under? Dumb Dora said. I don't think I matched, but it was the first thing that came to my mind. Oh, a point shot. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go with me. I was born under the sign for rent. I don't think I got any matches, did I? Okay. Oh, Myra got some matches. No parking. And Dennis said, Charlie, you're next. Sign of born under. Oh, uh, I don't think I got any matches either. I was born under the Hollywood sign. Oh, that's actually a good, a good, a good answer. Jamma B, the sign you were born under. Yield, yield is very funny. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our resident dog canine of the week. <laughs> Charlie. Okay. You have to slide back. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um ta -da. Charlie Bear. Yay. Oh boy, he's on now. Charlie said, What am I doing here? Where do I look? Where's my camera? Where's my cue card? <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, hang. Oh, boy. Celebrity <laughs> of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on my own podcast. I can't believe it. <laughs> Chat room. <laughs> this is uh, Charlie just... <laughs> He thinks this is the best. 
He said, I don't know. It's the easiest work I got. Oh, Charlie, that is so much fun. Hang on, buddy. People that funny want the dog. Oh, I, yeah, I'll do that next week. Um, well, this is great fun chat room. Jim, thank you so much for being chat room celebrity of the week. I'm going to have to put batteries in that thing in case somebody decides uh, to uh, be chat room celebrity of the week another time. That would be great. And yes, Beatmaster, uh, we're coming up to 500. Can we show House in the Middle? Why are you asking I watch Beatmaster? It. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm... Uh, Jammer B, can we play House in the Middle? Let me check with Beatmaster. Beatmaster, Beatmaster was, was keeping track of... Um, we're going to show it every six how months. I get the episode number every week from Pete Masters French. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, that'll be show 500. And also, it's very funny because Thursday, um, Turner Classic Movie showed House in the Middle. A and it, the more time goes by, the more you think, how could they possibly have ever made this video and that people did not laugh and scream and hoot and holler? Uh, anyway, that's for show 500. But for now, this has been regular old fashioned Giz Fizz. Wow, they, tra they traded their hops in for a dinky piano. Uh, regular old fashioned Giz Fizz is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman, Dick D. Bartolo, Myra Joyce, Jolly the Dog, Gamma B. Beatmaster, George Davis, Becky, uh, Jim Reed, L.A. Eric, Caesar, Ranger Rick, TI 83, Rintero, Dale Paco, Loke, Okaru, Superu, Eric Duckman, Chicago Tim, Giz One, Declare, Stooge, Bill in Michigan, Tupelo Steve, Geek Wannabe, Morgus, Black Rock, Dwindle, Doug M, Cartoon Steve, Dale Paco, Morgus, and iTech. Brought to you by Turtle Wax. Remember, it's not just for turtles anymore. See you Thursday on Giz Wiz. Timing. So, Jeremy, are you going away again now? I'll be back next Saturday. And oh, okay. I will be gone three Saturdays. Okay, next Saturday, and then away for three. Yep, All right, yep. chat room, this is a great fun. Uh, Jim Reed, thank you. That was great fun. Uh, chat room, see you Thursday for Giz Wiz. And that's it. Okay, bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, 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 um. uh -huh.